In October 1912, the Balkan League consisting of the kingdoms of Greece, Serbia, Montenegro and Bulgaria, after seeing the ease with which the Ottomans had been stripped of their possessions in North Africa the previous year, declared war on the Ottoman Empire in order to reclaim their lost lands. The kingdoms of Bulgaria and Serbia had the largest land armies of the alliance, but the Kingdom of Greece was the only member with a substantial navy. The Royal Hellenic Navy would prove crucial to the outcome of the war. There were 400,000 Ottoman troops stationed in the Middle East. Since the Ottoman Empire did not possess a modern railway network, the only way to bring these reinforcements back to the Balkans was by sea. The Royal Hellenic Navy kept the Ottoman Navy blockaded, denying them access to the Aegean Sea and successfully keeping the Middle Eastern reinforcements away. The Ottoman fleet attempted to break the blockade twice and was defeated both times. Today we will focus on the first such attempt, the Battle of Eli. The Ottoman fleet outnumbered and outgunned the Hellenic fleet. The Ottoman battle line consisted of two pre-dreadnought battleships of the former German Brandenburg class. The two battleships were the flagship Heiredin Barbarossa and Turgut Reis. Two modernized ironclads, the British-built Mesudier and Asari Tefik. And two protected cruisers, Hamidier and Mesudier. The Hellenic fleet wasn't as numerous and had significantly less firepower. It consisted of the armored cruiser Georgios Saverov and three antiquated ironclads, Idra, Psara and Spetze. The top speed of both battle lines was limited to less than 12 knots, with only the Georgios Saverov and the Ottoman cruisers being able to achieve higher speeds. The Ottoman cruisers, however, were not part of the battle line and stayed close to the shore to defend against a possible attack by the Hellenic destroyers. The destroyer attack never came though, and the Ottoman cruisers did not play any major role during the battle. On December the 3rd, 1912 at 8.15, the Ottoman battle line exited the straits and was immediately met by the Hellenic fleet. At 9.25, while the two fleets were sailing on a converging course, the Ottomans opened fire at a range of 6 nautical miles. Plagued by antiquated rangefinders and poorly motivated crews, the Ottoman fire was inaccurate. At 9.35, Rear Admiral Kunduriotis, frustrated by the low speed of his ships, hoisted the Z flag. From now on, the flagship Georgios Averov would move independently to the Hellenic battle line. Averov sailed forward at a speed of 20 knots in an attempt to cross the Ottoman T. At 9.55, I'm sorry, at 9.55 Averov finally crossed the Ottoman T, firing full broadsides against the Ottoman flagship at a range of 2.5 nautical miles. At the same time, the old ironclads of the Hellenic battle line concentrated their fire on the Ottoman flagship, effectively putting it between a crossfire. The damage the Ottoman flagship had received was severe. One main turret was jammed, a boiler was destroyed, lowering its speed even further, and a coal bunker was on fire. Turgut Reis and Mesudier had also been hit. The Ottoman commanding officer, Ramiz Bey, realizing the precarious position his ships were in, ordered a 180 degree turn. The maneuver, however, was executed poorly, and the Ottoman ships were unable to use the majority of their guns while being under continuous fire. The Ottoman commanding officer was then forced to signal a full retreat. The retreat was carried out in bad order and aware of pursuit. It is said that during the pursuit, Rear Admiral Kunduriotis, known for using a very offensive language, was constantly hurling insults at the enemy while also motivating his crew from the unarmored bridge. At 10.25, the Ottoman battle line entered the straits and the heavy Ottoman shore batteries forced Kuduriotis to break off the pursuit. Averov rejoined the Hellenic battle line just outside the range of the Ottoman shore batteries and waited for the Ottoman fleet to exit the straits for a second time. After three and a half hours of waiting, Kuduriotis finally decided to return to port. The Hellenic casualties were two killed and five wounded, with Averov suffering minimal damages. The Ottoman casualties were much higher, with severe damage inflicted to the flagship, light damage to the rest of the ships. 18 men were killed and 40 wounded. 
Some sources claim that more than a hundred Ottoman sailors lost their lives and even more were wounded. Thanks for watching. If you are interested more in Georgios Averov, I have made a video tour of the ship, linked in the description.